When you think of year-round fresh produce, most people automatically think of California, Florida, and Mexico. Well, did you know that Southern Ontario produces its fair share of produce year-round? The Southern Region of Ontario has the largest cluster of greenhouse operations in North America. Many of us have only seen the outside of these interior farms as we drive by quickly on the highway or fly above them on the way to an exotic location. Let's take a closer look at this often overlooked but very important industry. They've come a long way from the small mom and pop hothouses we remember from years past. The operation of today is much larger and full of state-of-the-art technology. Over the years, visionary greenhouse owners, along with creative partnerships with universities, private and public research centers, have yielded outstanding successes in all areas of greenhouse production. These advances have allowed the greenhouse industry to be a leader in the following areas. Innovative structural designs and automation has made for better lighting and growing conditions. The recycling of greenhouse nutrients and water makes for smarter use of resources. The mechanization of operations that optimize labor and safety. Biological pest management strategies that reduce the need for pesticide use. The innovative conservation of energy and use of alternative energy not only saves money, but greatly reduces emissions. The Ontario Greenhouse Vegetable Growers has also led a grower-driven food safety program. It was the first group in North America to regulate such a food safety program. An independent third-party audit firm ensures and verifies that growers, packers, and marketers are following set safety standards. If they don't pass the yearly audit, they won't be licensed to grow, pack, or market Ontario greenhouse vegetables try to keep the greenhouse as clean as possible. There's strict uh, procedures that our employees have to follow. Hand sanitation, uh, packaging is, is, has got some strict mandates as well. Hair nets, you know, gloves, hand sanitizers. The Ontario greenhouse sector led the way in North America in terms of food safety issues. Having a third party come in and examine how you grow the product, how you handle the product, how it's shipped, so they know that uh, every precaution has been taken to minimize any risk whatsoever. That's uh, a, a good statement or a good uh, a, a testimonial to, to the foresight of the Ontario greenhouse uh, vegetable industry that began this process so many years ago maybe a decade or more ago and are leading the horticulture sector in North America in terms of this uh, food quality assurances and traceability of being able to know that if you buy a product, should there be a problem with it, they'll know exactly which greenhouse it came from. They'll probably even know which row in a greenhouse uh, it was picked from. That's how uh, involved now the technology is becoming. The greenhouse industry as a whole plays a significant part in our economy with billions of dollars in sales, investments, and salaries. It is strongly interconnected with most of the industries in the present economic structure. In Ontario alone, vegetable greenhouses span over 1,900 acres or over 1,400 football fields. So what can you grow in a space the size of a football field? If you were to plant identical crops, one set in a greenhouse and one set in a field and both occupied the same space, you could see as much as 10 times the yield or harvest from the greenhouse than from the plants growing outside. Remember, a plant in a greenhouse can grow as high as 20 feet. As you can see, greenhouse growing is certainly a great use of agrispace, isn't it? When I first started, it was basically beefsteak tomatoes, the very large beefsteak tomatoes that we slice up and put on, on hamburgers or, or uh, sandwiches. And there was uh, cucumbers as well, unseeded English cucumbers, and a little bit of peppers. Well now, of course, tomatoes, there's, there's like a dozen different uh, types of tomatoes you can buy and grow in a greenhouse. Just a cluster of tomatoes, which are picked you know, in uh, sets of uh, several tomatoes, still on the vine. Uh, the small cocktail tomatoes and uh, great for salads. And of course the small grape tomatoes which are great in lunches and just for snacking on. 
So the number of, uh, just within the tomato sector, the number of uh, varieties and types have grown. We've seen how space is one key benefit to growing food in greenhouses. But what are the other benefits? After all, we have a pretty good growing season here in Ontario. One of the main benefits of growing indoors is that the climate can be controlled. The grower is responsible for the environment, not Mother Nature. This protective hydroponic environment includes regulating the proper temperature, light, and precise amounts of water and nutrients. Going green is a, is a big thing where we recycle a lot of the the water, the nutrients for boilers, the new fuels, you know, people are burning wood pellets, garbage pellets, uh, vines, biomass, methane, cool. You'll never, you wouldn't have seen those uh, as predominant 10 years ago, but uh, as the world's changing and we need to be more competitive, these technologies are calling out the woodwork. We do have the potential in the greenhouse sector, and we can look to the, uh, the Netherlands as an example. They, they generate about 10 to 15 percent of their electricity needs from greenhouses putting in large uh, electricity turbines in greenhouses uh, to generate uh, electricity. But our advantage in greenhouses is we can take the waste heat, pump it through the greenhouses. We take the CO2 uh, emissions uh, and clean it and put that through the crop too as a crop enhancement. So when we take natural gas, put it into electricity uh, generator turbine to produce electricity, we take all the byproducts. We, we take the heat and the CO2 that goes out the stack usually. We have a couple of operations now in Ontario, about three of them. One very large operation down in the Leamington area at Great Northern Hydroponics and two smaller uh, flower operations uh, here in uh, southwest in, in uh, the Niagara area. So I think that trend is something to, that we will probably be looking at a lot more in the future in terms of of looking at greenhouses as being energy producers, not just energy users. Pests can be safely neutralized with other insects. The move from, from pesticides to biological control uh, uh, basically started many, many years ago, but it uh, really took off uh, in the mid 80s to early 90s once uh, bumblebees were being used uh, in, a, in, a, in a large way in greenhouses. So once bumblebees were being used for pollination, then they could not use harsh chemicals for, for insect control because obviously then it would kill the, the bumblebees as well. And some, uh, like a regular bugs, we have to watch them every year. They come in every year anyway, right? But when we started, we have to put some uh, biological bugs and to make sure, keep the good balance there. And everything could keep a good balance, there will be no big problem. Certainly for, from the aspect of, of, uh, of health, uh, it is very much safer to use uh, beneficial insects and mites or biological control. Um, there's a number of issues. Uh, one is pesticide residue on the actual fruit that's going to market. But one of the other uh, major things that a lot of people don't even realize is, uh, is uh, worker safety. Plants are protected from extreme weather conditions like hail and damaging winds. These carefully controlled conditions ensure the highest quality, all natural produce available on the market today. The fact that the products grown are virtually free of pesticides also makes this attractive to consumers, locally and abroad. As a chef, I wouldn't even consider buying imported ingredients. I want to start with local products because I know that I'm going to get flavor, I'm going to get the nutrients and the, the value of, of the vitamins in that product and I know where it's coming from, that's important. Finding things in your own backyard is a big thing. What we do in Canada here, we're very restricted as far as food safety, health and safety, what we can put on the plants, what we can't put on the plants, and I think that goes a long way when you go to a grocery store and buy a Canadian product. First of all, the local stuff is fresh. If you buy local, you support the local like industry. And you don't have to waste lots of uh, tracking here, there, sometimes you bring the stuff from far thousand miles from the another spot. So it take lots of a uh, couple of days and then take lots of energy to get here. If it's traveling three or four days to get here and I have a local uh, alternative, maybe I'll try the local alternative that I know is, is fresher and, and uh, you know, has certainly traveled less in terms of the carbon footprint. Greenhouses can provide you and your family with fresh Ontario greenhouse tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers throughout the year. Remember, the fresher the food, the higher the nutrient value. This not only makes economic sense, but it is better for your overall daily diet. 
So the question might become, how do we find local products in our grocery stores? In Ontario, we have many different symbols to help you identify local foods in your grocery store. Foodland Ontario is the most widely used. Stores typically identify on signage what is Ontario product. If your store is not carrying local product, be active and let the produce manager know that you want local. The Ontario Greenhouse Vegetable Growers and the Greater Essex County District School Board working together for the young people in our community. This project is funded in part by Ontario Agri-Food Education.